I'm going to wait till you're all ready to listen. You in your homes, get ready to hear the word of the Lord. Tomorrow, the whole two hours are his. I'm going to just introduce him, and he'll minister with his wife. But I really believe tonight, there's a word God has put in his heart for this nation and for you. So I'm going to give him the freedom he needs. And as God leads him, I'm going to ask you to stay. Because we don't always have amazing people like Hank and Brenda. So no matter what, don't look at your watch. Because the greatest things always happen at midnight. Always. God brought Egypt out at midnight. We're not going to go to sleep. We want to hear what God has to say tonight. Let me hear an amen. amen. The hour is late spiritually. I had to minister the word that I had because I didn't want to rush. I think it's important. How many feel the same? Say amen. amen. But at the same time, what this man has, has, has to say, and dear Brenda, is also important. So I'm going to go sit down. It's all yours. All right. Well, good evening. And those of you that are watching, I do want to say this, talking about midnight. I've already been in the future, not just because of the prophetic, but we are on central time, which is obviously, I call it God's time. It's midnight. But I've been fasting for the last 10 years, uh, Pastor, just so you know, every uh, night from about 10 at night till about 6 in the morning laying before the Lord fasting. So anyway, you all got that? How many got that? So my, my body clock is on other times. So, But anyway, I do have a word that I want to share with you. But I want to just piggyback for just a moment because I came with a word tonight, and those of you that are watching, the true prophetic is what God is trying to establish right now in the earth. And uh, what I call throne room prophecy. There's three realms of information that come. There's the first realm, the media, what you hear uh, on the earth, or what people are saying, that people pick up and they begin to prophesy it and, and they declare that as the word of the Lord. That's why there's been a lot of confusion, for example, in the 2016 election. People were saying this person was going to get elected, this person was going to get elected, so much confusion. But then there's the second realm of information, which is where the enemy operates. He's the prince of the power of the air. It's where it's the witchcraft realm and the psychic realm. And the enemy longs to get you to become the devil's prophets. And there is so much being spoken right now by the mouth of the enemy, and people are repeating what the enemy is saying. Let me give you an example. When Y2K took place, and people were in fear, and whole television shows and things about storing up and, and getting people prepared for this cataclysmic event. I had something happen on August 23rd, a visitation from the Lord of 1999. And, and as the servant of the Lord came with a scroll, said, you are to declare before the people of the earth that this is not what they're prognosticating. And the spirit of fear is trying to cross the new millennial line ahead of the church. And this nation will be hit if they agree with the spirit of fear. And so people attacked uh, the word of the Lord. They said we were crazy, that it wasn't going to be a big deal. And I'm not saying that there isn't a certain wisdom of certain things. But what happened is the body of Christ, because the enemy works by agreement. He operates, gets you to agree with his agenda. God works by agreement, if two or more agree. And so there was an agreement that the church pulled fear into manifestation. And as a result, a year later, 9-11 happened, and this nation and the earth has never been the same. We are now facing something in our nation right now, a division that has grieved the heart of God. And those of you that are watching, maybe in the nation that you're in, God is not happy with the arguing, the fighting, the division, the strife, and this is not coming from the Spirit of God. 
It's coming from a demonic realm, from the second heaven, the chatter, the speaking, to get us to hate what is taking place, that God is trying to release a good visitation of his spirit and his glory. The problem is too many of us are misinterpreting and misreading the signs. And so the enemy wants us to pull this fear, this division into manifestation. So now the networks begin to pick it up and they begin to speak lies and fake news and get you to believe certain things, just like he said, a brainwashing of your mind. And it's creating strife. It's creating division. Why? Because the enemy knows that a kingdom divided cannot stand. And so if we can repeat the words out of the second heaven coming from the enemy, then we become the enemy's prophets. And yet God has something very sacred and very holy, and I don't perform for anyone. I'll tell you why. God dealt with me years ago, and he said it's the only office that he ever just said this about. He made a comparison to John the Baptist, a prophet. And you know what it was? What did you come out to see? And too many prophets and prophetic ministers have got caught up into performing. And so what they do is they take the sacred heart of God, which is what prophecy is. It's his heart. It's his mind. It's his will. It's his intent. It's his agenda. It's his perspective. And then taking that throne room perspective in his heart and then releasing it to the people. You don't say any other words beyond what he tells you. They never said about Jesus, who is this man that speaks with great accuracy, even though accuracy is important. They thought he was speaking for Beelzebub. They said, who is this man that speaks with such authority? Because he came from heaven, but he spoke the Father's heart from the throne room. And as a result, there was an authority or a weight on what he said. Now you say, why am I saying all this? Pastor was speaking about being very careful about what we're allowing to enter into our, our minds. Turning off the television. You ever thought, why do they call it a medium? Because it's projecting and channeling certain things to get in to your mind, your home, to affect cities and nations and territories. So we have to be very careful. There's a reason that when you go into the book of Acts, chapter 21 and verse 9, it talks about the house of Philip, the evangelist. And it says that he had four virgin daughters that prophesied. Now, why would it talk about his daughter's virginity coupled with prophecy? Because there's a hidden message that there has to come from all of us who want to prophesy and hear the word of the Lord from the throne room. We cannot be people who've been sleeping around in other words contaminating ourselves with things and pulling it into existence I was troubled years ago as I started seeing too many people leaving the earth and I said God God's ministers and I said Lord I don't understand this what is happening now this isn't everybody so don't please don't judge and think that you know why somebody went and you know to heaven prematurely, for example. He said, Hank, there are two specific things that I want to speak to you about, and this is why it's important. Because the heart of God is so important, it's so sacred, and it requires a purity, it requires a discipline. Those of you that are young in ministry, it's important that we have this purity. Where our motives are, what is our motive? Well, we want to glorify God, we want to glorify Him, we want to share His heart. We don't want to go beyond that. And so God said to me, the reason why some are being removed is because he said, pride. And he said, in fact, some people you will not recognize on the other side when you see them. And I said, it's because of their glorified body? And he said, yes, but they were so clothed with pride when they were on the earth that now they are clothed with humility, you won't recognize them. He then said, I want to show you why we need to prepare the ministers. This is why what you're doing is so important coming. we got to prepare the generation that is rising up because God is trying to bring his glory in great manifestation. Fear has been pushing it back. The other thing is 
God knows that if he releases his glory at this time, here's why some are being called away soon. Are you ready? That's what he told me. He said, you can work iniquity and be anointed. Now, that's not a permission. Matthew 7. Prophesied in his name. Did many mighty works in his name. But then Jesus said, depart from me, you worker of iniquity. I never knew you. I remember Marilyn Hickey telling me one day, she said, you know what's dangerous about iniquity? I said, what is it, Marilyn? She said, iniquity is purposeful sin. Where God deals with you about things, but you keep bending and moving towards that sin. You can be anointed because the anointing is not what you are. It's your job description, Luke 4, 18. Spirit of the Lord God is upon me. He has anointed me. And then Jesus told us what it is that was his job description. So you could be anointed to do something in honor of him and be purposefully sinning and working iniquity. But when the glory comes, it'll take you out. And some people, the glory started touching upon them and they didn't change. And God, by his mercy, had to remove them. This is a holy time that we're coming into. And here's what I want to do. Tomorrow night, you need to be here because I want to talk to you about a vision that I had on February 12th of 2019. My wife was at the office. I was at home. It was just a few days before Valentine's Day. And I was trying to get the house ready. And I was wiping the, the what do they call it, stovetop. And as I was wiping the stovetop, all of a sudden, I went out in the spirit and, and I was carried. And how many of you have ever downloaded on your computer files? And you can see the rapid rate of those files and how they go down. As I was taken in the spirit, God said to me, he said, I'm showing you. And I literally saw if Jesus chooses to tarry. Twelve years into the future of what is going to take place in this nation and the earth. And, and I, I'm not setting dates. I'm just telling you what he said. And he said, I can only show you 12 years because you cannot handle it. And it was like a rapid uh, information being downloaded in me. I was seeing one event after another, 2020, 2021, 2022. I was seeing so much. And I said, God, why are you showing me 12 years? He said, because this is about my kingdom now. And he said, 12 also, there are certain things that I'm trying to establish and bring into divine order. When the pattern is right, the glory falls. 1 Kings 18, there was division in the nation. Ten tribes to the north, two to the south. The prophet took a prophet to come and to put the stones in order. And then when the 12 stones were in order, the glory fell. In Acts chapter 1, there were 11 apostles. Judas hung himself. So when the pattern is right, the glory falls. The lot fell upon Matthias. And then what do you get? Acts 2, the glory falls. God is getting us ready for the glory. I saw it. And he asked me a question. I was walking my two German shepherds in July of about 2016. And there was a cloud that was appearing off in this park that I was walking in. And I thought something was on fire and it began to swirl. And my two German shepherds literally sat in attention and began to look up at the clouds. And I knew this was not a fire. Then I felt the presence of God. And I began to kneel down and weep, and I was trying to bury my face. I didn't care if anybody was in the park. I tried to bury my face as low as I could in the ground because of the holiness that I felt. I wanted to take off my shoes. And God spoke from the midst of the cloud to me, and he said these words. And I want you to listen, and those of you that are watching. Because not only are we in a new decade and a new year, we've entered into a new era. October of 2015, the Spirit of God began to prophesy, and he said, Watch when you see a former president be laid to rest, and on the very day that this happens, that he passes away, that the soil of your nation, United States, shall shake. Look up, for you have entered into a new era. And so, how many know this happened in 2018, George Bush Sr., died, and on the very day that he died, there was a 7.0 earthquake in Alaska. We've entered a new era. And so, as I was with my dogs and that cloud appeared, the voice of God said to me, and listen very carefully, he said, what does a nation 
look like filled with glory? I was shaking. I said, I cannot answer it. He said, that's correct. What is coming, your eyes have not seen. Your ears have not heard. Your heart has not even entered in what I am going to do in the nations of the earth. He said, when glory comes, things begin to change. Matthew 17, when the glory touched Jesus, his raiment's changed. When the glory comes, listen very carefully, and those of you that are watching, there's some troublemakers that God's got his eye on and he's about to put his finger on who have been making trouble for this president. They're making trouble for this nation. They're making trouble for the nation that you're in. And when the glory comes, Isaiah 6, in the year that King Uzziah died, I saw the Lord high and lifted up, and what? His glory began to fill his temple. We are in a very dangerous season right now because the Lord said some have, because of their divisive spirit, have opened a door now. And this is the reason that some are going to be found weak, sick, and die. Because God's glory is coming to set things in order. And we're going to see it in the next 12 years. You say, well, what, what is this all about? Listen to me. Pastor was talking about having our minds renewed. And it was a very incredible teaching. But I'm here to ask you a question that the Lord has put in my heart, and then we're going to minister to you, and I feel a word that we need to release over Iran. Here's a question that God wants to ask us tonight, and I say this in all humility. The first time you really hear of Jesus speaking is in Luke chapter 2, verse 46, where it says that he was in the temple speaking and asking questions. Here's the question he's asking. It's Mark 8. Are you ready? Verse 22. Here's what it is. He asked a blind man, it's the only miracle, to my understanding, that I'm aware of that he ever prayed for somebody twice. It's the only time I know that. Why did he pray for a blind man two times? Because there is a need for a continual adjusting of our perception, our perspective, what we see, how we think, how we process In Mark chapter 8, verse 22, he took the man out of the town of Bethsaida because who built towns? Mankind. And he brings him out into the open for the purpose that when his eyes would be open, he wouldn't see man's perspective. He would receive God's perspective. Too many things are being said over the United States that has grieved the Holy One. Too many things are being said about this president that he put in office. That's grieving the heart of God. Because we're getting our perspective. How many of you have been before God and can honestly say that the Lord told you that he should not be president? I can prove to you that on 9-11, God said, For the towers that fell this day, 2006, 2007, 2008, there's recorded prophecies. This ministry here prophesied, out of New York, I will raise up a president that will bring this nation back on course. And then God said when it would happen. He said, look, United States. In fact, he won't let me call it America anymore. Because he said, every time you say United States, you are decreeing unity. But he said, in the 240th year of the United States reign is when I shall raise up this president. On 9-11, he said these words. He said, and the people were there, they know. He said, you'll go to war, but listen to the voice of the Spirit now. In this place where the towers have fallen, I will raise up one who has been born here. Because there is a spirit that has been upon the nation through abortion that is trying to obtain a permissible right through bloodshed. We call it abortion. God calls it blood sacrifice. You have authority today because of Jesus' shed blood. Every time a baby is murdered in the womb, 
it's causing a certain authority in the satanic realm to affect our nation. And God said, I'm going to raise up a man born and raised out of New York City. And he said, and look to the towers. They represent something. What does Trump represent? Trump Towers. Is that a coincidence? World Trade. And he said, for each tower, I desire to raise up. Listen carefully. This is all conditional upon how we pray. For each tower, I desire to raise a president up for two terms. To bring this nation back on course, but not just two terms, but two presidents. Now, you say, well, pastor, this sounds political. Listen, there were prophets that spoke to kings. There were prophets that had to speak correctly regarding kings so that the people would understand what God's agenda is. It's when the prophets get caught up and become prophets of the land and tell the people what they want to hear that we get in trouble. So God wants to ask us a question. What do we see? What do you see? Do you see good? Do you see evil? Are you afraid? When you hear about Iran, when you, when you hear words like what I'm saying to you, what do you see? Because, see, I saw something. In the future that God is wanting to bring for the next 12 years, should Jesus tarry, he said, I have declared this decade, and we're going to talk about it tomorrow, as the decade of difference. It will be good for my people and I will separate them as I did with Egypt and Israel. I'll separate them into blessing like they've not seen. And he said, this next decade, watch this now. He said, not only is it going to be a decade of difference, but he said, you're going to see my goodness begin to be revealed because goodness and glory go together. Moses said, I want to see your glory. And God said, the first thing, I will cause my goodness to pass before you. 2 Chronicles 5, 13, rather than speaking bad about America, speaking bad about the United States, speaking bad about the president, we need to be doing 2 Chronicles 5, 13. You know what they were doing? The Lord is good, and his mercy endures forever. Keep reading. Then the place was filled with glory. We need to start speaking over the United States. Lord, you're good. Your mercy endures forever. Well, how do we know that? Because, listen. In 2016, I believe it was when they voted for same-sex marriage. How many of you remember that? And they lit up the White House. And I fasted for three days, and I said, God, please tell me. And here's my stupid question. And he didn't answer for two days. My stupid question, I said, God, did you know that they were going to light up the White House? <laughs> for two days. Two days I asked him, and I was getting no answer. Finally, it dawned on me. Of course God knew. So I changed my question, third day. I said, God, what did you do? Because you knew. What does this mean for our nation? He answered me, and I was surprised what he said to me. This is why we need our perspective adjusted. You know what he said? He said, Hank, when they lit up the White House and your Supreme Court voted, he said, I turned and I looked at the mercy seat and I saw the blood of my son and I remembered my covenant and I have decided because the prayers of a few. I said, well, what about the prayers of the many? He said, many are not praying. They're speaking wrong. He said, the prayers of a few, I have decided to open a window. This is why, be careful, impeachment is not about taking a man out of office. It's about trying to impeach the agenda of heaven and what God wants because we've got a friend, are you listening to me, of Israel in the White House, a friend of the church, more reform can be done in the history of the United States regarding the church and what we are called to do. We have a friend of the child in the womb that doesn't have a voice. And God said, 
I am looking to bring a window open over the United States as I bring this vessel forth and give this nation a mission of mercy. Mercy triumphs over judgment. Do not agree with the devil's prophets who are wanting us to speak the divisive things that are coming from those who do not fear God. They could half care less about his heart. And they could care less about his church. And to be honest with you, they could care less about the child in the womb. And yet God showed me something in this decade. There's a movement that's about to come. And he said, I'm giving this decade back to your children. That's why all of you that are here, Pastor Benny, that's why you're, you're anointing. And your, your, your mandate is going to shift even more towards the young. Because it's been given to the children. And here's, here's why this is important. Because for the two towers, are you listening? Two terms is his desire. Two presidents. You say, well, what does that mean? Listen to me. Because I'm going to share with you one last thing we're going to minister. Here, here's what this means. When I saw the future... I saw the word recompense. What's recompense? Payback. God has a trumpet that's on purpose supposed to be loud and obnoxious because of the level of corruption that none of you in this room or you that are watching really understands the level of what has been done in secret places behind closed doors. That is about to come out. And it needs someone who is not going to bow down to it. And then God, all these things that are being taken out, Ten Commandments. There's going to come a woman that's going to rise up on the Supreme Court that the Lord is going to bring there. That is literally going to be a very compassionate woman. And you know how the scripture talks about how there's an enmity between the woman and thy seed? There's been an enmity. And it's been through abortion. And there's been a woman on the court that this has been happening. But now guess what God's going to do? He's going to raise up a woman. It's going to be part of his plan to topple the courts to where you're going to start seeing rulings like 7281163. And major laws are about to be overturned in favor of righteousness and justice. Okay, this is important. How many hearing me? Okay. Now, I want to say this as Pastor, or Brenda, as you get ready to come here in just a moment, because I want us to play, we're going to pray in the spirit. By the way, if you want to learn to prophesy, Acts 19.6 says that they spoke in tongues and prophesied. There's something about getting over in the spirit that'll get you connected to the heart of God and to the voice of the Lord, okay? But one of the things that I want to say this in our perspective being adjusted, what do you see? Remember, he had to lay hands on the, the blind man two times. And when he had his eyes open, Jesus, as what pastor said, made him look up. Why? To get God's perspective and to keep God's perspective. That's what throne room prophets do. They come and they give you a different perspective than what the news is saying or maybe what's being discussed in the land so that you can understand what is God's heart, mind, will, and intent. Now, here's what's amazing because when you look at this, all of a sudden he began to see men walking as trees. And I said, Lord, what does that represent? He said, there's a movement coming among mankind. And you need to recognize that all of this that's happening, the hatred, all of the warfare that's happening. Notice how it happened in 2016. Why did it happen? They said there's never been an election like 2016. Because the number 16 or the number 6 is the Hebrew word wa. And it literally means a conversion of heaven and earth coming together. Hell is reacting to the glory that's moving. Hell is reacting to the agenda of God. And that's why he's stirring up hatred and strife and all of this. Are you listening? Because he's trying to counter 
what God is saying and doing. Mark 6, and I'll leave you with this. Jesus feeds the multitudes, and he sends his disciples out. He constrains them, says, get in the boat, go to the other side to Bethsaida. And he goes, and he says, I'm going to go pray, and he begins to pray. Well, the disciples are out in the boat. One translation says that they've been out there quite a while, rowing three to four miles. And the wind was contrary. In other words, there's opposing forces trying to buffet the church, buffet God's agenda right now, trying to stop what God wants to do. And all of a sudden, Jesus begins to walk on the water towards them. And the scripture says, as you look at the translations, the different ones, it says he intended on purpose to pass them by. It was a test. We're in a test. Are we going to choose God's agenda over what they're saying in the media regarding this nation, regarding this president? We're in a test. And there is a visitation of Jesus, just like with those disciples that's moving towards us. Here's the problem. They looked at the visitation of Jesus. Something good was trying to come towards them. Something good is trying to happen for the church. Something good is trying to happen for this nation. It's in process. Here's what they did. They called something good evil. Too many people are taking the chatter from the second heaven and from the first realm. And they're calling what God is doing right now. And they're saying it's evil. Because we need an adjustment of our perspective. Are you hearing me? So this is the heart of God tonight. And then I want to share with you tomorrow about the decade of difference and what we can expect. expect. Let's just go ahead and stand to our feet for a minute. I'm not going to keep you here real long, but I do feel like there's a couple people we need to minister over. Yeah. Okay. Listen, all of you stand up quickly. Um, tomorrow night, I just changed tomorrow to be here at 7. Because while he was speaking, while he was speaking, I just felt more people need to be here tomorrow night. And 5 p.m. is early for a lot of you because you have to work. So uh, how many of you need a word from God yourself? So he'll... he'll he, uh, Dear Pastor Frank, Let's do that minister. tomorrow night more yeah. where I will minister more over the people for the sake of time because I feel like tonight was Please. I needed to be honest with you about the heart of God. That is the most important thing whenever I do is, God, I have to communicate your heart. And here's where I'm at. And this is something that I'm sure that you live this way too, and that is this. Whenever I speak or prophesy, and you can go to our website. Is it okay for me to yes, not try to advertise the, the website? Free, please. It's uh, hankandbrenda.org, or you can go out to our uh, Facebook page. It's One Voice Ministries, Hank and Brenda. And here's why I'm bringing it up. Uh, there's a lot of these prophecies that are documented that are out there. Let me give you an example. For uh, They're talking about retaliation and, and the president being a warmonger. Days before there was any situation happening in Iran or any retaliation God prophesied and he said, there will be a retaliation. How many of you read that prophecy that's here? Okay, so you know I'm telling the truth. And is that not true that it was before there was anything? And God said, they're going to accuse the president of being a warmonger. Because this is why we've got to have the heart of God. Because if you're listening all the time to the news and you're listening to what people are saying, you're going to miss out and misread the sign. Jesus is trying to bring something good to the United States. He's on a mission for mercy. And we need to agree with that. God's goodness is trying to touch this land. And I promise you, one of the ways it's going to be for a season, like Pastor said, we're going to see the economy really begin to go to a place to finance the gospel. And really, that's what it's about. It's not just so that we can just get rich, but that God can have provision for uh, the vision that he wants to give through the church. But anyway, the Lord said something very powerful. And you can go out there to those social media pages and see that. He said that he was going to put his feet upon Iran. 
And he said, when I put my feet upon Iran, he said, look for the soil will shake. Do you know the day that they fired those missiles into, uh, I believe it was Iraq against those era bases from Iran, there was two earthquakes that happened that same day in Iran. So a lot of these prophecies, obviously, they're coming to pass, and you can, you can look them up. But my heart is this, and, and I always want you to hear this. Talking about perspective, there's been enough people that have been speaking what I call Joel 2.2. You know what Joel 2.2 says? It says it's a day of, do, of, of gloom and, and, and darkness and clouds and thick darkness. Well, all we've been hearing is the doom and the gloom, but they don't understand that the darkness and clouds of darkness is not the same as gloom and darkness. It's the same Hebrew words for when God came down in his glory and Solomon in 2 Chronicles 6 verse 1 says, this dark cloud is the glory of God. When Moses looked up and saw God come down, he saw the thick darkness where God was. We've heard so much doom and gloom, God is trying to adjust our perspective. For a season, he's coming with mercy. And, and, and I had a vision just the night before I went on Sid Roth, I was just on his program just a few uh, weeks ago. And I saw God, both of his hands, trying to, there was a whole arsenal of stuff that he wanted to bless the nations with. And people had their hands lifted high, the church did. And, and he was trying to put this in their hands and they wouldn't take it. They wouldn't take it. Some were, and, 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 I, and I cried out in the vision. I said, no, God, why won't they take it? And he said these words to me, and listen to me carefully, especially you in, you in the United States. What 2020 represents, and I'm not a Hebrew scholar, it, it represents either an open hand like this or a hand like this. How many of you have heard that before? And he said, Hank, the hands represent, in one hand, it represents, do you know, 30 million people didn't vote evangelicals they say in the last election people get mad at prophets today and I understand that there are those that that maybe say things and and uh, it's not credible but I'm giving you God's heart and agenda I'm telling you what he has planned should he tarry but what's different about me and Samuel the prophet for example he wasn't subject to a democracy he could just go pull somebody out and anoint him with oil I don't want to see God's agenda and God's heart be affected because we choose not to vote or we don't agree with God and vote according to what God likes. I'm not telling you how to vote. I'm just telling you you need to vote, but then you need to ask yourself some serious questions. What is going to give, like Paul the apostle said, keep the door of the gospel open for the church? What's going to defend that little baby who never had a voice? Who's going to be a friend of Israel? And in the second hand, every, every prophetic word has to be mixed with prayer. Okay? And tomorrow we're going to talk more in detail about what God is saying in this decade of difference. You don't want to miss it. Go ahead. And then I want to... Oh, and want now to... even so the Spirit says, watch in this season what I begin to do among my people, for there shall be a great removing of scales from the eyes of my people. And the Lord says, watch as you begin to see a great awakening come among my church and even among my ministers, for you thought that some had been blinded or cast to the side, but the Spirit says, watch, I'm about to use some that you thought could never be used in that way. But the Spirit says, See, there shall even be those that shall come from the world of entertainment that shall begin to be those that will be spokesmen for my kingdom and for my purpose. For the Lord says, Watch a great awakening that begins to come among my people in this season. For even in this year, says the Lord, as the seasons begin to change and move, the Lord says, You will even see a great revival of miracles and a great revival of those things that many have prayed and cried out for and the Lord says yes this shall be the time when the prayers of my people that have been prayed over the last
last decade. And some have said, when, Lord? When, Lord? When shall it come? And the Spirit says, watch even as it begins in this year as an awakening hits my church. Hallelujah. And the Spirit of God says, in the days of the crucified Christ, in the last moments, and he spoke his last words, and he gave up his ghost, I spoke and I declared and I said, Arise, my love. The earth shook and the veil was torn. And God says once again, I speak from the place of the throne room. And I say to my church, this is the time that I'm calling you to arise in a new decade. But watch the soils of the earth, for they shall shake, says the Lord. Why is this happening? Because a veil that has been placed that has caused some to be deceived and to be blinded by the work of my hand in this time. The veil is being removed that I will cause that which has been undercover, that which has been hidden away, to suddenly come to the light. For there has been too many lies, says the Lord. But now my spirit is coming. It is the spirit of truth. And my truth is marching forward, says the Lord in this time. So keep your eyes upon this nation. For look to the eastern part of the United States. Such signs, says the Lord, of what I'm doing and what I will do. For there shall be power outages in unique places. Do not fear when this takes place. For God says when the lights come back on, you shall see in those places there shall be those that sat in darkness shall see a light of a different kind for they shall be awakened. Keep your eyes upon the 13 original colonies for they will say how can it be in these places that the soil shook? The Lord says I am causing things that need to be brought down now to be shaken. But California, I stand in your midst today, says the Spirit of God. And I say to you, calling for you, I am calling for you. And God says they have said, for too long, you shall be divided. You shall split away. God says, do not make me laugh. For there is a dividing and there is a breaking away of a different kind. Because you are looking at the wrong fault lines. For there have been those seated in very high places that God says it's time for them to be shaken. It's time for them to be removed. And there is a California of a different kind that shall begin to arise in this new decade. For you will say, I remember the days when fires consumed our soil. I remember the days when there was drought. God says, look now. Feel the wind that shall visibly blow. You will say, what is this, this gentle breeze that some will testify? God says, then watch and look very closely. For there will be a mist. And it will begin to be that which I will form in the clouds. And cause it to begin to rain upon you, California. And I will do this as a sign. For there will be those who gather once again upon your streets. Upon your beaches. And it shall not be the old, but God says the youth of California shall lead this once again, says the Lord. They will gather in the public places. They will gather in the stadiums. And they will say, great is our God. Let me speak to you now, says the Spirit of God concerning Iran. For Iran, the Spirit of God says, 
You are not destined to be destroyed at the hand of oppressors or at the hand of the enemy. For I have placed my feet upon you, Iran, for this time. And your soil will shake yet again. And when you see this happen, look up. Because I will shift, I will shake, and I will remove the leadership that has oppressed you. And the reason this is happening is because I have heard the sounds of the people of God who are crying out before me who have been oppressed, says the Lord. They shall have their hour and they shall have their day of freedom. And God says, listen carefully. Not only is my feet planted upon Iran, but I am running swiftly throughout your nation, Iran. And things will begin to change. And the veil that has been upon the women shall be removed. And when this happens, there will be a greater unveiling of ancient spirits that have held men in a place of deception and deceit. But they shall cry out, Yeshua! Why is this? Because Iran, when the name Iran is declared and mentioned, it will be known and it will be seen that I, the Lord God, ran through you. I ran through you. I ran in the midst of you, says the Spirit of God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Lift up your hands. Lift up your hands. Lord God of heaven, we ask you for a fresh visitation of your spirit. Not of our might, not of our power, but by your spirit. I pray right now. Come on, it was a, it was a prophet Elisha that prayed for the eyes of the people, his servant to be open. I prophesy, and those of you that are watching, I command your eyes to be open, to begin to see God's perspective. I release upon you a greater prophetic anointing in the name of Yeshua. Receive it. Let your eyes be open that you will see the plan, the will, the agenda of heaven. I speak now and I declare, let there be a release of your eyes to see, your ears to hear the perspective of God, the spirit of truth in the name of Yeshua. It's released now in the name of Yeshua, in the name of Yeshua. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Karomosa. Imbre setile cruz sambre rebaso remangro se barikite. Recito rumondo rebasa de kitse de bota. And you have the baso rekayase. And you thought that you have seen a lot, says the Lord. But son, the Spirit says you haven't seen anything yet. For the Lord says, I'm only beginning to allow the blossom to come forth. For you haven't seen yet what I will do. And the Lord says, get ready for there is property that will come to you and be added to you, says the Lord. And you shall be set on a place place where you will be noted among men and among women and I will give you my words and my voice for the spirit says but note this night son you haven't seen anything yet hallelujah <laughs> And so now this is the time and the hour is upon you. For there are things that you prayed even 10 years ago and better. Things that you asked for that looked impossible. And it still seems as though they've yet come to pass. But the Lord says, watch now. Even in this year as they begin to come back, come to pass one by one, two by two, three by three. And the Lord says, yeah, those things you prayed, I didn't forget. And they shall come to pass. <laughs> And the devil thought he could try to steal from you unjustly and take resources out of your hands and rob from you. But the Spirit says, watch, payback is on the way and it's coming now. And this is the time when the Lord says, I'll be your rear guard and the devil won't be able to rob from you any longer. Hallelujah.
Botanishne Rusa Barakalo Remando Sariba No se prite Levuna man grande y parecona no superkishne rezando a sebre and so it's th- the time now that the whirlwind begins to stop for it has seemed like it's been one tornado after another and every time you make some progress it seems like you go way on back but the Lord says I have brought you out this night that that season shall come to closure and the Lord said this is the time when progress shall overtake you and the plowman shall overtake the reaper and you will see fruit like you've never seen before says the spirit Kavu Musa Briba Chinibo Rukuna Ayatur Masato Rusalia Tunay Rosarle Grumushne Abardo. O oh, daughter of God, for know this that your prayers are marked in the heavenly place. Your prayers have been marked in heaven. And even the angels now, the harvesting angels, are going forth and they are bringing to pass those things that have been marked by the Son of God. They have been marked in the throne room place. And so the Lord says, Daughter, know this that I've given you a prayer anointing that shall come to another level in this time. And the Lord says, When you pray, it will happen. And it'll be noted, says the Spirit. Alushi watu kungangi watwange le supri alushne, lache wanganguangimia wo seprade shulu. And there have been those that have criticized and those that have said this and done that and they have had a, a certain mindset but the Lord says watch that I bring around people that even turn their back at times on you. The Lord says I am going to bring them all back around and the Lord said like Joseph was you will stand before them and minister to them and you will be able to give them the word of the Lord and the love of the Father. So the Lord says watch those that I bring back around and suddenly they'll wake up and the Lord says you shall see your season come where you will be exonerated daughter of God you put in my sultuma recursion mardili kunana resale tonashe and so the Lord says, I'm going to give you a new vision, son, for you have been tracking along one direction. And the Lord said, it's all been of me. But get ready, for there is a new place and a new level I'm about to bring you to. For as you keep yourself before me and you're faithful, the Lord says, watch, I'm about to open a whole new pattern and way of doing things. And the Lord said, it'll come to you supernatural. And I will send those that will talk to you, speak to you. But the Lord says, this is the time. Get ready for the visions and the dream. Ruto Purishilo Kuayachi Niwaka Lure Kita Pushna 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 Come on. And so get ready for that prophetic, that prophetic, that prophetic anointing. It shall come out. And the Lord says, Watch, watch, watch it come bubbling out of your spirit. And the Lord says, When it does, and as it does, the Lord said, Get ready, open your mouth, son, and speak. Now, bef- before we turn it over to Pastor, Hallelujah. I feel very strong in my spirit. I just want to say this one thing, and I don't know how the Lord will move tomorrow, but I feel like before we go tonight, I, I want to encourage everybody, put your hands on your eyes. Because as Hank was, I was sitting over there, Pastor, as Hank was talking about us getting a perspective for the nations, what God wants to do corporately. I feel like for some of you, the The devil, the enemy, has come to cloud your perspective over you and over things pertaining to you. And sometimes this is the way the devil works. I mean, you know, we're we're not ignorant of his devices, but he tries to come and get us to be clouded. So that we are so caught up in our stuff that we don't see what God wants to do on the larger scale. So I want to pray this. That as you put your hands on your eyes, Father, right now for every person in this room where the enemy has tried to bring a clouding 
Some of you have lost your prophetic vision. There's prophecies that are yet to come to pass. And Father, for each one of these that is in this room that have gotten discouraged, they have allowed the pressures of life to blind their vision. Right now, in the name of Jesus, we declare that your eyes are opened afresh Amen. to the anointing, Amen. the purpose, the destiny, Amen. the blessing, Amen. the vision of God for your life. We say in Jesus' name that you begin to see again. You begin to dream again. You begin to hear God afresh again. We prophesy in the name of Jesus right now to your eyes, the mind of your heart. Be open. Come on, shout it with me. Say, be open. Jesus, come on, shout to God. Shout to God.